This is a film about money and debt. We're going to be meeting Charlie, Margaret, Katie, Peter and Sarah and we'll be finding out how debts became a problem for them. I was homeless and I had a child. I walked out. I want you abusive work but you, you just had to go to your work. Eventually I just got more and more ill. Every week this woman comes to my house. Unfortunately it turned out to be a con artist. And then I still pay and I pay, 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 pay because your debts would get worse. But I found that a wee bit too late. I walked out because I had to walk out. So that was the start of it. And we'll hear about how their money worries affected them. It's very, very much. They really made me ill. Quite frightened sometimes. Like, you turned into a different person. Worry, depression. It caused me to have a stroke. But fortunately, they found out what money advice could do. This is the only way if someone has any problem with money, with that, we've got to listen to the advice. Because, whether we like it or not, money matters. Where lenders provide loans responsibly and borrowers carefully budget their money, credit can be a practical and effective way to spread the cost of living. But life does not always go to plan. Ten years ago in Scotland, nearly 16% of all inquiries at Citizens Advice Bureau were to do with debts. Since then this has steadily risen and today about a quarter of inquiries are about debt. The average household in the UK has total debts, not counting mortgages, of £8,000 and the total amount of personal debt owed in the UK currently stands at nearly one and a half trillion pounds. But behind all of these numbers are real people. There are several reasons why debts can become a problem for people. Often it will be because there has been a dramatic change in a person's circumstances, such as losing a job, becoming ill, or sometimes as a result of a breakdown in a relationship. For Sarah, this was where her difficulties began. Up until then, like, I'd worked and stuff. Because and, I was always proud and I was always on top of things and I was always a wee fighter and a wee coper. But the relationship breakup just put everything up in the air. Like, I was homeless, I was... I had a child. I walked out. But I walked out because I had to walk out. I had, like, a mini breakdown. It was left me with agoraphobia. For Margaret... Her debts were caused by a relationship problem of a different kind. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a con artist, but I found that a wee bit too late. When we did eventually separate, I didn't realise just how far down I was and how far into debt I was. So between the stress of doing the job I was doing, and then I had a cleaning job, um, and then I was delivering leaflets, but the money wasn't going anywhere. For other people, their earnings may be very low, or their only income is benefits, and they find that they can barely meet their essential expenditure. With credits so readily available, many will borrow money, but these debts can quickly become unmanageable, as Charlie found. I should, I should be able to budget money, but I just found that I just never had any money to budget. I never had coin, even coins in my pockets uh, for maybe five days of the week, and work was, was getting bad. Uh, it was like... A lot of abuse at work, but you, you just had to go to your work. You just couldn't uh, not work uh, because your debts would get worse. Peter and his partner had periods of unemployment. To help them get by, they borrowed several times from a doorstep lender, but they quickly found themselves trapped. Every week, this woman come to my house and take about uh, ninety pounds, like about hundred every week. And I was to pay, and I pay, 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 but it was too much, honestly. Another reason people find themselves in debt is because our consumerist society encourages us to buy things we don't need and run up debts we cannot afford. Katie was not comfortable being on camera, but she has allowed us to reenact her interview, and these are her exact words. The more debt you have, the more you get, oddly enough. You'd think it would be the other way around, but... The more you get, the more you want as well, and it's just a really, really bad cycle. Katie's debts grew and grew, but she had been keeping on top of her repayments. However, when she became unwell, matters got worse. I just got more and more ill and inevitably lost my job, and I was having to rely on friends to get fed and stuff. I had nothing. I had no money, no food, no nothing. So, yeah, not a place I want to go back to. I'm actually thinking about it now. In fact, I feel like crying. 
Housing associations have become increasingly aware of these issues and are providing money advice to their tenants. Our role as a landlord of affordable housing is much more than just providing the housing. And when people face issues around about debt, that can affect their health. So what we try to do is to provide a broad range of services to allow people to sustain their homes. So what debts do people have? When people think of debts, they will typically think of bank loans and credit cards. And these kind of debts account for 40% of those seen by the outreach money advisors. Other debts include council tax, gas and electricity, benefit overpayments, catalogues, television and phone, and high interest loans provided by doorstep lenders or payday style lenders. Many people find interest rates confusing, but it can be easy if you imagine borrowing £100 for one year. A bank or credit union loan might charge 10% interest. So if you borrow £100 for a year, then at the end of the year, you need to repay the £100 plus £10 of interest. Interest on credit cards could be charged at 25%. Doorstep lenders typically charge around 300%. And increasingly common are payday style loans, which can carry an annual percentage rate of over 4,000%. Research recently carried out by R3 for the BBC showed that 60% of those that took out payday loans regretted the decision, and only 13% believed that their payday loan had a positive impact on their finances. With high rates of interest and so many different bills to juggle, it is easy for things to start spiralling out of control. And then I juggle payments, I'd be paying this thing, not paying the other one, and then have to double up on that one. Paying this one, I was paying that one, I was missing this one. You just keep juggling, juggle this money to that money. You pay what you could pay and running away for the rest. Until they sent the big red reminder. There's lots and lots of phone calls that get to see. I'm still now he answered my phone. 16 times a day from 8 in the morning till 10 at night constantly, constantly, constantly calling me. They just hounded me. They were hounding me. They always wanted more and more. And even when they can hear you're upset. These are the times when people need to turn to family and friends. But debt still carries a taboo. There were a couple of friends knew, but it's not something, again, there's a stigma attached to debt. I just didn't want them to know that I was in debt uh, because um, I felt really ashamed and embarrassed about the situation. And you tend to keep that quiet. So for a long time, that was horrible. And that kind of pressure can affect people in different ways. It can affect their eating patterns, whether they're eating too much or eating too little. And I, I blew up. I went up to about 14 stone. I lost a lot of weight, just stopped eating. I, well, when I did have money, sorry, I would buy lots of rubbish and virtually stuff myself uh, because I knew well, maybe two or three days I wouldn't have... I, I just couldn't save food. I just sort of, because I'd been so hungry, I would bang it into me. You wouldn't have reckoned, you wouldn't recognise me. And as the pressure and anxiety builds, Many people find both their physical and mental health affected. I started to take a very strong pills for my health, something like uh, Prozac. Once your mental health goes, you're just... It's just scary. You just don't want to get out of bed. What is there to get out of bed for? Nothing. Everything starts to go round in your head. And it's just that whole not sleeping, not eating, not living. It caused me to have a stroke. And the hospital told me it was just pure and simple worry. Angela Lamb, a money advisor, explains just how bad things can get. People have um, disclosed to us as money advice workers that they are actually at the end of the tether and they are considering um, suicide, they are considering ending their life. They feel them so trapped by it. But it was very, very bad for me, I think, many, many times about maybe finish myself. How close I was to suicide, because I just thought, and if you're in that place and you don't know what helps out there, you know. Suicidal thoughts can arise when people think that they are out of options. But one thing that money advisors are keen to point out is that there are always options. Unfortunately, the people talking to us today did get advice. Our interviewees explain what it was like seeing a money advisor for the first time. I would walk in 
and I just felt so down. I was terrible. I felt so guilty, so low. And to talk to a complete stranger and to say I'm having difficulties with money, um, I think that takes a lot of courage, and I really admire people that um, do that. And I, I was embarrassed to discuss my situation because I thought. What if you can't give me an answer? What if you can't do this? What if you can't do that? They're, they're, they often feel quite despondent that there's not very much that they can do. So they're like, I'm telling you this, but there's probably nothing you can do to help. She took everything on board. She got in touch with all the people that was due debt to, um, and she spoke to them. So one of the key things that money advice workers will do is to speak to people about them um, contacting creditors on their behalf. And what we find in the Money Matters project is initially quite a lot of people we work with say yes, they would prefer that because they just have got to the point where they feel quite harassed. It would phone them up straight away, which is something I would never do, and get things sorted out. That was almost our first meeting we started that. In the first time was, I opened my eyes, and then I think, and the slides. Because people generally do take responsibility for their debts, many people will often do without the essentials in order to keep up debt repayments. Sometimes it was, we can, we don't have money for power, for gas. One time we have no heating about two weeks. And you look for cheaper, cheaper ways to do things. Uh, maybe miss a meal, um, drink water instead of tea or coffee. One of the key things that we do is we go through who they owe money to and then we can go through with the person what is a priority, what we really need to give attention to first. And one of the key areas is we want to keep you in your house and we want to make sure that your house is heated and warm and that you've got food to eat. Most people are surprised that there are options. If something's sort of temporary, um, then perhaps the creditors are, will kind of happily give them a bit of space because they might be looking for work again. They might accept token payments for a while of just something to show goodwill. Other options available might be that someone actually can probably clear the debt but just need a bit longer so we might look at rescheduling. There's other options like trust deeds and then obviously in some circumstances where people um, do not have the money to pay the debts and their circumstances are not likely to improve then again we can help people understand the process of applying for bankruptcy in Scotland if they feel that is the most suitable option for them. We asked Margaret, Sarah, Katie, Peter and Charlie what they would say to anyone who's becoming anxious about their money. Which and I have said to people since, phone these people, I have done that. And get help as soon as you can. Don't leave it because it does mount up and ignoring it does make it worse. And go down and see them, it does work. Just having somebody to talk to and somebody fighting your corner makes all the difference. Because this is the best solution. Not to stay home and, oh my God, I, I don't have money. I must borrow. There is no solution. And take pills? No, 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 no. Now they have lasting solutions to their debt problems. So, how do they feel? And to know I wake up now and I don't know anybody any money and I don't have to hide in my own home. I don't have to ignore the phone. I can open my mail because I know that it's not about debt. So, yeah. That's the point where I started getting stronger. Like, that's the point where... I started getting better and back to, back to being me again. I, I see light in the dark. Maybe everything will be okay. And now it's okay. It saved my life. I'm debt free. What, what money I've got coming in is my own. And it's all thanks to them. I'm eating better. I feel better in myself. I'm a, I can afford to buy decent food. I've got nobody at my, at my door. I have money in my pocket. As you can almost see. <laughs> I've got some money there, which I never used to have before. This film has shown the devastating cost that debt can have on people. But whether you are struggling badly with debts, or just want little help keeping on top of things, money advice is the answer. But we'll leave the final word to Charlie. I, f I feel like a new man, actually. I do, I feel, I feel like a new man. I feel younger than I, than I used to be. <laughs> but I do, that's exactly how I feel. The advice given by Citizens Advice Bureau is free, impartial and, of course, completely confidential. 
So we are particularly grateful to Margaret, Sarah, Peter, Charlie and Katie for sharing their stories. Thank you. Thank you.